What if I told you that Alien, the usual suspects, and Martin Scorsese's Casino were all basically the same story? Now I don't mean they're the same as in the all follow the three act structure, and I certainly don't mean that hero's journey BS, especially since none of these movies even resemble the hero's journey. I mean that on a sequence to sequence basis, they all tell an identical type of story structured in an identical way. They're the same in that they all follow the same plot pattern. One of 34 plot patterns that have been endlessly repeated in American cinema again and again for the last 50 years. I call this particular pattern the infecting being. It's one of my favorite patterns as well as one of the simplest. Basically, the story imitates the life cycle of a deadly illness. See, when a virus first enters your body, you don't even know it's there. Then when you start coughing and sniffling, you first think it's nothing serious. Then suddenly you're floored by this terrible illness, putting you in a life or death battle that's gonna get worse before it gets better. Likewise, the infecting being pattern centers upon some virus-like person or creature that slowly infects and destroys everything around it. However, the threat of this toxic agent is never fully recognized until it's too late. To make things clear and easy, I'm going to start out with three simple examples. Alien, Jaws, and Gremlins. Now I'm going to be explaining things using movie act terminology. So if you're not yet familiar with movie act structure, it helps to watch this video first. The plot kicks off with the agent entering the character's environment. In Jaws, the shark appears in Amity and eats its first victim. In Gremlins, Billy's father brings the Mogwai home as a gift. Alternatively, when the agent can't come to the characters, the characters enter the agent's environment, as in Alien when the Nostromo crew investigate the creepy alien spaceship. At first, the characters are unaware of any real threat. There's nothing alive on the alien ship, the Mogwai is completely harmless, and it wasn't a shark, it was a boating accident. Because of this ignorance, the agent is allowed to permanently attach itself to the character's environment at the end of Act 1. The alien facehugger latches onto Kane and gets brought aboard the ship. The shark makes Amity its new hunting ground and attacks again. The Mogwai literally multiplies like a virus, and now the house is full of them. In Act 2A, the characters continue to ignore or underestimate this threat, allowing it to grow stronger and gain an even greater foothold. In Alien, the crew experiment on the creature, but remain ignorant of the monster growing inside Kane. In Jaws, the town folk refuse to close the beaches and even presume they've taken care of the problem. Billy's household thinks little of the growing danger, even after the Mogwai transform into slimy pods. Then, halfway through the movie, the agent finally reveals its true threat. The alien monster bursts out of Kane's chest. The shark has a feast on the 4th of July in front of the whole town. The pods hatch with vicious gremlins. Through their own ignorance and lack of action, the characters have allowed a monster to take over their environment. So in Act 2B, the characters do the most sensible thing. They take a series of practical actions intended to capture, control, or eliminate the agent. But the agent is always one step ahead. It keeps growing stronger, smarter, more willful, and each time evades or defeats the characters. So at the end of Act 2B, the characters must admit that such further efforts are useless. They have no choice but to resort to an extreme plan of action in Act 3 that will hopefully rid themselves of the agent once and for all. Ripley and the remaining crew realize they have no option but to blow up the ship. Failing all else, the Jaws crew have no choice but to fight the shark up close and personal. Billy and friends have to lure all the gremlins into one place so Tarantino can rip off the scene in a later movie. But the agent won't go down so easily, so Act 3 must end with the most extreme of extreme actions to finally eradicate this virus. In the end, there are no real winners in an infecting being story. Only survivors. The environment is left in a shambles, all because the characters refused to recognize a threat until it was too late. There's a lesson to be learned here, which is why we keep repeating this story. Now these were all horror, action, monster type movies. Let's see how this pattern operates in a different genre. In Martin Scorsese's Casino, Ace Rothstein successfully runs a mafia-owned casino, but his life starts to slowly unravel with the arrival of the story's virus, Ace's crazy buddy Nicky Santoro. While Ace has his doubts about Nicky, he says nothing, allowing Nicky to permanently establish himself in Vegas by the end of Act 1. But Ace is a busy guy, so he chooses to ignore things in Act 2A as Nicky starts to infect his casino and then escalates into far more serious crimes. But just like an alien, at the midpoint Ace discovers he has allowed a monster to come into being. Nicky is now THE Vegas crime boss, and Ace's connections to this monster now threaten his livelihood. Ace tries to rein in Nicky in Act 2B, but Nicky keeps growing more powerful, more violent, more impossible to control. But Casino just isn't about Ace and Nikki. With its 3 hour runtime, Casino is actually a double infecting being. 
there are two viruses ruining Ace's life, Nikki and Ace's wife Ginger, and the Ginger narrative follows the exact same pattern. First, the agent enters Ace's life. She's then permanently attached to his environment when Ace proposes marriage at the end of Act 1. In Act 2A, Ace ignores the warning signs that Ginger's only using him for the sake of her old pimp, until the midpoint when this threat becomes obvious. Ace then tries to keep Ginger under his thumb in Act 2B, but she only grows more rebellious and more impossible to control. Things then get really bad at the start of Act 3, when the two viruses join forces against Ace. But unlike our previous examples where the heroes are willing to go to the extreme, Ace remains reluctant to do what it takes to finally remove these viruses from his life, and this becomes his undoing. The two unchecked viruses end up destroying everything in Ace's world. Again, there are no winners only survivors. Hey, you like the Dark Knight? Same pattern. Batman ignores or underestimates the Joker's threat until the midpoint when all hell breaks loose. But the Dark Knight's kind of cluttered. So if you want a simpler example, Guillermo del Toro's Hellboy tells pretty much the exact same story. Then there's the usual suspects. Like American Psycho in this video, this is a case where we can only see the pattern once all the story secrets have been revealed. Namely that, spoiler alert, Shouldn't have to say that for a 30 year old movie. Namely that Verbal Kent is the stories infecting Agent Kaiser Soze. Once we know this, the pattern becomes obvious. At the inciting incident, the agent enters the character's environment. Since Kent seems so harmless, the others think nothing when Kent permanently attaches to their group. Ignorant of the threat, the characters are manipulated in Act 2 a in ways that allow Soze to tighten his grip. Then, at the midpoint, the monster springs forth, with Soze's threatening presence finally revealed. So as usual in Act 2b, the characters respond with actions intended to escape or subdue the agent. But of course, Soze proves too smart and too powerful. He's always one step ahead. So the protagonists have no choice but to admit the agent is too strong, and that extreme actions are necessary to rid themselves of it. Only here, the characters make the mistake of giving in to the agent by agreeing to do what Soze wants. And by surrendering to the virus, it kills them all in the end. No winners, only survivors. In this case, it's the agent who walks away. So where does this pattern come from, and why does it keep appearing? And how can there be 33 more of these repeated again and again without anyone knowing it? Well, if you're curious, give this video a like. Because if this trio of videos gets 200 likes or more, I'll explain the long, complex, and fascinating details of what's really going on here. But here's a hint. These aren't formulas. They come from a much deeper well. But until then, why don't you watch this video to see another plot pattern in action? Or maybe watch this. Hint, 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 hint.